so welcome back. Today's gonna be an S2000 day. I got three simple quick things, should be quick things that I'm gonna do. Um, if this video comes out after the last garage video, the garage is not done, it's still in the works, so we'll just kinda see where these videos fall. But until then, this is what we're gonna be doing today. So there's three things overall. First thing is I ordered a LHT master cylinder brace. Very simplistic what it looks like. This rod just threads in and out, and it came with a little 3D printed keychain, which I already have one of theirs. This is a little bit different design. Number two is I ended up buying a whole control here for my driver's side door. So what's broke on mine is the actual mirror to, you know, tell it left or right mirror. Mine does work, but the actual like little connector up here is gone. I'll show you that in a second. Um, it still does function, but it's just kind of annoying because I have to use like a little pick or something like that to move it back and forth. But I got the entire control here for like 65 bucks off eBay. So we'll kind of see which looks better as far as this whole panel here. I'll just swap it all in. Or if mine looks better as far as like wear and tear on the auto, I will just essentially remove this mechanism we'll see when we get there third thing is uh this little spoiler here is i guess it's like an oem replica sort of um, from what i gathered is the actual lift here on the back kind of is a little bit more aggressive we'll see when it goes in the car it does not come with much um it comes with a roll of some 3m tape it is already color matched to the car you can buy your color and it does have little mounting holes here and i do believe there's holes in the trunk um, that being said, I don't know what I'm ultimately going to do with the car. It is my kind of like secondary dealer driver, so I do enjoy driving it. So it may go through some phases. I don't want to drill holes in the trunk in the event that maybe I eventually go to like a wing or something like that. And then my trunk is kind of set up for that and the wing doesn't bolt where that thing bolts. So what I'm going to do first is put the wing on here, the little spoiler. So it's going to be pretty simplistic here. All right, so at the rear of the car, just to kind of see how the fitment just sort of looks, I'm just going to lay it on here a little bit. Oh, just kind of falls into place. Um, so let's see here. So butting this up against the tail light, it kind of has like a, it honestly just kind of has a home. It just sort of feels like it falls into place. We can see how it, it's kind of touching it there. Let's just kind of see what it looks like over here. Oh wow, super nice fit. Um, again, it's not taped on there, but you kind of get a point of view of what it's gonna look like. We'll see how the tape, uh, probably move it back a little bit to make sure this thing sits flush on here. So. This is pretty easy install. Um, so for starters, what I'm gonna do is just kind of wipe down the surface underneath on the trunk deck and also on the bottom here with some wax and grease remover or something just to kind of get anything contaminants off of it. And let's get to putting some 3M tape on the bottom of this. All right, you can use tons of things, maybe some acetone and whatnot, but I'm just using wax and tar remover from Rust-Oleum. Um, just gonna do a quick wipe on this thing. What I will say is it looks like a pretty decent color match. Um, to add to that though, I'm like 99% positive that car has been resprayed at some point in its life. Um, just based off when I painted the bumper for my fog light install, and I kind of when I just you know painted it in general. Again, um, I, I know it's tough to match paint, and I'm not a super body guy here. I'm just kind of starting to venture into this world. But uh, what I do notice is the car's got a lot more uh, metallic and pearl that you can see through it. And this does not look like it's got a ton, but that being said, it looks like the color is there. So, so far, I mean, it's a good match for what I got in the car here. So if you're worried about a color match, I'd be pretty confident in what it, you know, what you're gonna receive here. Uh, I kind of wish maybe gave me a little bit bigger of some 3M tape, but it is what it is. They gave me a roll. So again, I'll probably put the price tag what it was up here. It was like 89 bucks or 113 for the price. I don't know if I can necessarily beat this as far as the fitment and what they gave me. All right, so there it is. You can see what I kind of was able to get covered. I kind of put it right in front of this little lip here. Um, so this is about almost the same height as far as this height as this. So hopefully the actual wing sits, you know, flat. So I'm gonna get pretty much all of it, except for this, this little gap here. I'm gonna see if I have a little extra and I can just put it there. But otherwise you could probably not come all the way to the edge. And I've got the same stuff. I've got 3M tape holding my little EDM wing on my CRX and it's been on there for, I don't know, two years now or however long it's been. It hasn't fallen off or anything. All right. So obviously you want to get this as even as possible. Let's try not to stick it on there and then have to move it again. That looks pretty good. Now let's just kind of push it down. All right. Hell yeah. So apparently that's got an OEM one. You might be able to see if it's a little more aggressive or not. You can see it contours in there pretty well. There's no like crazy, there's no gap or anything like that. 
And it's probably because those little ledges that I showed you before, so the 3M tape is about flush with it, so it does a pretty good job. That's a pretty easy install there. Let's, uh, let's get to the LHT master cylinder brace. I'm really liking that. All right, so we're gonna start by removing the strut tower bolts. Let's kind of crack this one loose. All right, so I'm going to kind of leave it about where it should be. I'm gonna kind of hand thread it in just a little bit. All right, we kind of got it on a little bit. All right, I'm gonna thread it in a bit more just so I can get it lined up. There we go. I'm gonna thread it in some more. So I can tell you already, if I go to push that down, if I go to push it down, it's definitely hitting that brake line. If you can see it right there, not anything crazy. So it's this brake line right here we're hitting. Should be able just to gently with my hand even You want to get crazy with it. Kind of fish that back in there. All right, so these are hand tight. The rod is also you can kind of see maybe it's it's got a little bit of some play here. I'm going to leave it a little bit loose so I can tighten these down. All right, so they're snug, and this just by default kind of got a little more snug as I tighten this brace down. So let's kind of extend it out a little bit. There we go. You can show it. This line I had to bend out of the way, this bottom one here, but she's got a lot of clearance now with an easy bend. I just kind of stuck a screwdriver underneath it and pried it up a little bit off this cylinder here. Now this line over here, I bent that a little earlier. It's got some clearance, enough that I can obviously stick this toolbox foam and it moves a little bit probably overthinking it but uh i'm gonna leave that there for the moment if it flies away it flies away just to kind of give me a little peace of mind to see if it rubs at all i don't think it's gonna rub but uh i'll leave that there for the time being so overall i think it, it looks nice it uh, fits pretty well and uh i know the engine bay is a little dirty i did kind of a cleanup on it from when i got it if you followed any of the videos so far but there's definitely still a lot more to come i definitely need to clean back there all kinds of stuff so that's gonna wrap that up uh next gonna be the door panel all right, so as I mentioned earlier, here's where my uh, mirror control is. It works, but you see the little tab there is broken off. So what I've been having to do, or I haven't really done it since, but you know, my initial adjustment kind of stuck a, a pick or anything in there and you can, it does work, it moves. It just does not have the little top uh, little top guy there. It's kind of just broken side. So I take the whole door panel off um, and just see if I can swap out the switch or we're gonna see what's better. So to start, you got uh, these little guys here need to come out. Again, a little pick, I'll just kind of get it. Be gentle, don't want to mess up the door panel. There's one up here on top. And there's also a Phillips head screw behind here. So let's start with just taking them out. If you can as these screws come out, maybe put them in a tray or something. Just so you don't lose them. And then there's gonna be two little pops up here. Again, you might be able to use a little pry tool. You might be able to use a scribe. Once I get it kind of popped a little bit so I don't like get crazy, you've got any like body tools. These work real nice like that, just popping it out. All right, and like most door panels now, you should be able to just kind of pop them. There's gonna be clips in the bottom. I kind of like to start at the bottom. They're kind of going to be going all the way around the sides. Just pull gently and work your hand around it. Don't just yank the whole panel off. Don't forget this guy like I just did. All right, kind of 
pull up, slide it over a little bit. All right, so you'll be able to see there's the, the tweeters plugged into the top and the panels, the panel down there, the actual switch panels got plugged. So just basically unplug those. All right, so I took the door panel off, just put it on the bench. You can see there's a little tab here. There's a little Phillips head here. So it looks like if we remove this, so let's just kind of push back here, which this should go up and maybe that'll then, it'll kind of like, yep. Yeah, but you see it's kind of popping up on this side here. So I'm going to keep pulling this side up. There we go. And now I know because that little tab is going to kind of pull back. All right, so this may be nitpicky, but the car is not perfect, but I obviously want it to be as nice as I can make it. So the lock, you know, on and off looks about the same. What's crazy is the auto, you can see where it's worn there on the one that's in the car. Here's the one I bought. Almost the same. The, the button itself made it a little more shiny, but the wear on the word auto is about the same. This all feels good. Feels about the same as mine. So I'm honestly just going to throw this. I'm just going to clean this and just throw this whole switch in the car. And uh, we're just going to go from there. All right. So I just kind of put this back in the same way that, you know, we took it apart. I just kind of just hang it on here. I want to make sure that the windows, because again, this is a used switch. So not only do I want to make sure the mirror works, I want to make sure actually the windows and everything work too. So the passenger's not working. Now it is, so the lock works. Let's change the mirror. And the mirror works. All right, cool. Check the other side. Cool, so everything works. Auto window down works. So now, I'm just gonna kind of slide this. You're gonna wanna make sure that this top track here is, you know, falls inside where the window is. feel it find its home. We're going to push it forward ever so slightly so everything kind of lines up. Once everything lines up, you're just going to kind of simply, you remember how we kind of popped it off in the bottom? Here are the clips. I'm going to take the clip that we removed up here. Put that in. Door handle's nice and tight, everything's back on. All right, that about sums up this video. So I did get to go to my first Cars and Coffee here in New Mexico and actually found another Red S2000 that was completely OEM, hard top, the little wing, everything. So I got to compare mine versus his as far as the wing. And the wing, this eBay aftermarket one here, it, uh, it does have a little bit more of a, a slope kind of coming up here, but nothing drastic. I still like the look of it. Uh, it's been holding up great now for about a week. So the LHC master cylinder brace, normal driving, I don't feel anything, but I decided to kind of, you know, do some 40 to zeros, just kind of slam it on the brakes. And the pedal definitely feels a lot firmer, I guess you can say. It's just a little more responsive. It's kind of hard to explain the feeling, but it just feels like the brake pedal just engages just a little bit harder, a little bit stiffer under heavy braking. Um, window switch, everything feels fine on that. So simple switch there, just some general maintenance still going on with this. I did just swap over the wheels on the CRX. I went back to the slipstreams for the time being, just to kind of go back to that look um, for the moment. So hopefully next weekend I'll get to take this out to the Cars and Coffee, and the rest of this garage should be hopefully getting finished in the upcoming week and for another video following that. And then some big news is Sandia Speedway, I'm gonna probably get a membership there so I can kind of go to the track almost as I please. So definitely some upcoming track videos. And I'm definitely excited to hopefully have the wife driving the S2000 and then I'll be driving the CRX out there. So I know this is a little bit short of an outro, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something from this. Appreciate all everyone from subscribing. And if you have any questions, concerns, leave them in the comments below. I just love interacting with you guys. Stay tuned for the next video.